In typical far left overreach, liberal MP Khalid demands that X surrender private and secure information about a lawsuit they're funding over a freedom of speech violation. Welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. So a little bit of a backstory. Um, the four major platforms, well, four major platforms were in committee talking about freedom of speech and talking about the censorship that the Liberal government and the far left and the NDP are hoping to impose on Canadians so that they can limit what we have to say and limit how much reach we have in discourse and disagreeing with their policies. And of course, the Liberal round came to um, their turn in six-minute round and the Liberal MP Khalid decided that she was going to try to take I mean, it's, it's ironic that we're talking about misinformation and disinformation, and she attempts to take this little story and turn it into something else, right? Now, I'll tell you what the story is first, and then it'll make more sense. So this fellow, Matt Strauss, who's a doctor, it says here, an Ontario clinical care physician and professor filed a lawsuit against Queen's University because he went on Twitter, or X, but at the time it was called Twitter, and he spoke out against the all of the um, lockdown madness which I don't blame him. And of course, they fired him for it. Now, Elon Musk has made it clear that anybody that gets fired for something that they put on X, he will pay for the lawyers. And so here, the second one down, X is proud to fund a lawsuit filed by Dr. Strauss, Matthew Strauss, an Ontario critical care physician and professor against his former employer, Queen's University. Now, that is important that I said that because in a minute, Ms. Khalid near the end of her presentation is going to try to cite that as trying to indicate that Elon Musk and the X platform are paying for politicians fundraising. Like they're, 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 they're paying for their campaign. And she tries to tie it in with, with Pierre Polyev who has absolutely no control over who runs. And that's a different video, but it, it, there's rules against how much the leader has can say about who runs in the party. He can endorse, but he can't necessarily pick and choose, which is not just absurd the way that this woman behaves. And, and, and you, when you think of the idea that she's a member of parliament, and I'm telling you right now, she's stuck in grade six. That's the way it seems to me. I mean, the, the, the absolute immaturity of this entire presentation just to recap, Meta X, Google, and TikTok are in the, the um, Access to Information and Ethics Committee trying to explain to the far left government that there's no need to be exercising censorship laws and things of that nature. And of course, MP Khalid can't miss her opportunity to try and make a soundbite that she's taking on Elon Musk, right? Because we both, we all know how the far left hates Elon Musk, but they love X, they're on there constantly. I'm going to let you hear this ridiculous presentation. I mean, the woman, it's ridiculous. A 2021 study found that in five G7 countries, Twitter had, quote, statistically significant difference favoring the political right wing. The study found that Canada had the largest discrepancy between the right and left, with liberals having an application uh, amplification of 43% compared to 167% uh, for conservatives. Why does X favor right-wing uh, politicians? So our mission, our operations, our ethos are politically agnostic. Our algorithms actually don't uh, factor in political sentiment uh, and how they recommend content. So she's mad because in, in the G7 countries, Twitter gets more uh, um, center and, and center right and right wing um, traction than. And in Canada, you heard her say that it only, the liberals only got 43%, whereas conservatives get 168%, 166%. It's 168%, something like that. Which, if you do the math, is about four times as much. Which means if there's a million liberals on X, there are 4 million conservatives. And if we extrapolate that out, we're talking about conservatives being the primary way of thinking. 
And I don't think that she appreciates that if we go to Facebook or if we go to, you know, any of another 20 or 30 websites or news applications, all we hear is the narrative of the far left being pushed despite what the conservatives want to say. And then all of a sudden, Elon Musk says, well, I'll just make it free speech and you can say whatever you want as long as you don't call people names or, you know, threaten them or anything like that. And it turns out that people want to be able to say whatever they want to say. So they went to that site. They gravitated towards that site. And by all accounts, he's making a lot of money at that site. And now the far left is upset. Now the far left wants to vilify. Well, the far left needs to realize that if they want to be so inclusive, if they want to be so free, they have to let people be free. And that is something that they utilize to get to the position that they're in. If there wasn't freedom of speech, then they wouldn't be able to say what they have to say. But I think that that nuance, that subtlety is lost on MP Khalid, who just wants to complain that what it sounds like to me, her opening statement is just complaining that people like the far right, that people enjoy the content and, and the positions of the right wing, and they don't enjoy the left wing. Because as you heard the fella say, they don't push any of it. That's just people reposting and people repushing. So that's what people want to hear. That's what people believe in. And that's the way people think. Of course, you can't explain that to Miss Khalid because Miss Khalid believes that she has the right to be in control of everything and no matter what. And you'll, I'll, I'll show you that here in, in this upcoming uh, statement. In May of this year, X announced that it would be funding Pierre Polyev's uh, conservative candidate, Matt Strauss, in his lawsuit with a Canadian university over vaccine misinformation. Matt Strauss has uh, been active on X promoting anti-establishment conspiracy theories, uh, claiming that the WEF is directing government policy. How much financial support has been received to date by this Pierre Polyev's conservative candidate from X? Again, X does not engage in any political giving. He's laughing at her. See, that's the story I just showed you, right? Like, you know, I showed you the, the same post that she has. But <laughs> you see how he's laughing at her? She doesn't intimidate him in any way, shape, or form. So I would ask you then, again, are there any other politicians in Canada, whether at the federal, provincial, municipal levels, who X has supported financially? No. How much financial support has been provided to Canadian politicians in general from X here in Canada? Again, X does not engage in political giving. But she means, you know, donations or funding of the... Of the um, campaign political giving and he's a high-ranking guy like he looks after both he's responsible for both uh, Canada and the US now you can see that she is twisting the facts that she is trying to repaint these facts into a different light the very definition of disinformation the actual definition right is to take something and make it seem as if it's something else and if it's the misinformation definition, well, I don't care because it's all the same to me. It's just a couple of words that people made up because they can't stand to handle the truth. Like this Miss Khalid, who is a ranking member of the Liberal Party, who's a who's a, a federal politician, and as far as I can tell, is treating the whole thing like it's just some sort of high school or elementary school playground where she believes that she can twist people's words and get away with it instead of being in a room full of people who are paying attention, but it gets worse. That's nothing. You'll, you won't even believe this next step. As I say, Mr. Fernandez, it is on the record that X has agreed that it is footing the bill for this uh, conservative candidate. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to follow up with more information on uh, our efforts around the world to support folks uh, who are dealing with issues uh, of freedom of speech. <laughs> but we do not engage in political giving or political campaign giving. So, Chair, I, given that there is a discrepancy in the information that is publicly uh, available uh, that has been uh, published by X uh, that they have claimed and agreed that they are footing the bill <clears throat> for a, uh, a right-wing candidate of the, the Pierre Polyev uh, Conservative Party uh, and the discrepancy of, of what Mr. Fernandez has, has said today, <clears throat> clear contradiction 
uh, in uh, in what he's saying. I, I would like uh, for there to be. Um, hopefully with the consent of, of all of our committee, uh, documents to be produced. Um, the names of all Canadian politicians who have received financial support from X, how much financial <laughs> support has been received to date by each of those candidates or elected officials, how much financial support each is entitled to receive, the mechanisms in place to ensure that all money is going to the intended purposes for which there has been commitments made by X to these, uh, these candidates and proof that all money to date has gone to intended purposes and that checks and balances are functioning. And then lastly, the status of all legal proceedings for all of the, the above that, that I've referred to. So... <laughs> This woman thinks that she has, let's just say for the sake of argument, that they were funding candidates all over Canada, all up and down the country, which is not against the law. You're allowed to donate. Corporations donate to Justin Trudeau. Corporations donate to MP Khalid. It happens. But let's just say for the sake, it's not what, what X is doing. But let us just say for the sake of argument that it is. In her mind, she can demand that they not only tell her who's getting the money, they tell her how much money they're giving. They tell her how how long they've been given the money and what is the status of the, of their of their campaign. The word control freak is what pops into my mind here. Uh, she doesn't seem to understand that you know, like she has limits and boundaries, and those places that she's trying to walk into are not her domain, and she's overstepping and overreaching, which seems to be quite a bit of a theme with people on the far left, especially MP Khalid. She thinks that she has to get, she has the right to, to, to direct everybody, to tell them how to speak, to tell them what they say. But we all know that what she's, what she's doing here is, is, is spinning a yarn, right? It's not even factual what she's talking about. They're not supporting the guy's campaign. He was arrested, or he not arrested, he was fired for something that he put on Twitter for disagreeing with the policy. Now, when the far left university comes into the courtroom, they're going to have some high priced lawyers. And many people who are not in a position that are not critical care physicians are not able to withstand the type of, of paperwork and the onslaught that these lawyers will go through. So, and uh, Elon Musk is no fool. He knows that. And so he said, I will pay for anybody that gets fired for something they said on my platform. I will cover their, their free speech uh, legal. And he does it all over the world. But of course, that, that terrifies the far left, right? Because now uh, they got a two twofold problem all of a sudden. Right now they're up against a guy who is not intimidated by the amount of lawyers they bring into the room. And secondly, now we see people are running to Twitter to to have their say to to vent so that they can disagree with um, all of the far left mechanism that is put in place to try and squash and 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 deter people from speaking their mind. And of course they can't they can't withstand it. They, 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 they lose their mind. Now, MP Khalid is, I'm sure, looking for some, some snapshots that she can put on the internet and say how she's standing up to uh, Elon Musk, who the far left has this really love-hate relationship. With one minute, they can't stand him. The next minute, they're totally all over his platform talking <laughs> and doing all of the things that, he, you know, that they say he, they, they dislike him for. So it's it's quite an interesting situation and it's a, quite an in, interesting dichotomy that he must you know have to withstand. He takes it fairly well, pretty much in stride. However, this is a Liberal Party MP who's in the Access to Information Committee who's trying to do, make a report on whether or not we should be censoring. This is the way she thinks. This is the way she acts. This is the way she talks. I mean, she can't even seem to make to make sense of what the facts are. Right, but the, there's one more just staggering little piece, snippet of information that she throws into this in a minute after she asks for con unanimous consent. The chair's trying to figure it out, and then one of the uh, conservative members says, "Hey, I got a point of order." And then near the end of the point of order, you'll never believe what MP Khalid has to say. I mean, I just you have to wonder: is she even hearing herself talk? 
So we would have to know that those documents exist for the yeah. committee to be able to request them. So right. the committee does not have the power to request documents that don't exist or to request the creation of documents. Yeah. So I would be interested. So if this is a motion that 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 Ms. Khalid's putting forward, what yeah. what we'd like to see I the motion in writing that, because yeah. we're um, just without knowing that these documents exist to your yeah. point chair I, yeah. i'm not really sure what the source of this is yeah. so so let's see what the request is and then we can consider it but um but we're not able to provide unanimous consent to okay. for the committee to do something that the committee doesn't have the power to do yeah. um, uh, no chair I, I i do want to to make a point here because yeah. okay. i, I feel so that I, i'm starting your clock again then because you're absolutely. making a point absolutely okay, sure go, go ahead. ahead and and to to respond to to mr barrett's <laughs> concerns i will read a, a tweet from X um, on May 3rd of 2024, where it says, X is proud to fund a lawsuit filed by Dr. Matthew Straws, an Ontario critical uh, care physician and professor against his former employer, Queen's University, after Dr. Straws argued against wide COVID lockdowns and mandates on his ex account. Um, his uh, Twitter, uh, Queen's University, publicly ostracized him, retaliated against him, and ultimately forced him to resign because his opinions did not conform to the university's um, political orthodoxy. X supports Dr. Strauss's efforts to vindicate his free speech rights without fear of unfair retaliation. Your, your time's up. I, I will give Mr. Fernandez an opportunity <laughs> quickly to respond to that, and then we, we'll circle back uh, to the information that you're asking for later. Yeah, Mike, our company and its leadership has made clear that if there are people around the world uh, whose employment has been affected by what they've said on the platform and exercising their free speech, that we will support them uh, in, in helping defend them. So that is what that is linked to. Um, and so I just want to make that point. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, she read it off, right? She read it off that X is supporting a lawsuit for freedom of speech. And she's still trying to manipulate the situation into making people believe that X is funding their campaign. Right? Because the guy wasn't running for office. He simply disagreed. The critical care physician. I mean, it's not like it's it's Bob that's standing on the street corner. This is an educated individual who is in the field of medicine, who is also a professor, which means that he's a doctor who teaches doctors, who creates other doctors in all likelihood now i didn't dive too far into it, what he was doing as a professor but i know that the term i know what critical care specialist means and i know that if you're a doctor in a university that you're probably there so that you are capable and, and competent enough to certify other people to become doctors and yet the administration of the school decided that they, he wasn't going in line with their political outlook right not their science just their political outlook. Now, I don't want to go too far into that right now because I've done a lot of laughing at Miss Khalid as she deserves every, every chuckle. I mean, the idea that this woman thinks that she's going to take this information at a misinformation meeting, at a, at a, a supposed to be studying the, the effects of this on the political system, and she's trying to take something and turn it into something else in the political system. I mean, she's literally doing what she claims to be investigating. Am I the only one that thinks that that sounds ridiculous or at least appears ridiculous? Is it just me? Am I, you know, and to take a line from Will Ferrell, have I taken crazy pills? Or do we see that somehow in her mind, the disconnect between what she's looking at and what's coming out of her mouth is so severe that it's, it brings into question whether or not she's qualified to be a member of parliament. I certainly wouldn't give her my vote. I'll tell you that based on this conversation alone, never mind the rest of it. I don't care about her politics in, in, in the sense of this. I just know that this is a, a great example of what she represents, right? She's not trying to get to the streets. She's not trying to get to the bottom. She's simply trying to start trouble, which is why we have to be more careful on freedom of speech than ever. Because if we didn't have the right to say this is what's going on, and somebody gave her a microphone, she would be putting out this misinformation and disinformation without somebody to counter it, without the proof to be shown, without the receipts, as they say, in today's day and age. 
And that's exactly what the freedom of speech is designed to protect us against. Overreach by people who are in a position but not have, do not have the scrutiny or, or do not have the scruples, excuse me, to control and contain and do what's right. They don't have the virtue that they, they claim to possess. So they, they sit in a room full of people who understand what, what, is, what, what that tweet was all about and what this lawsuit is all about, and they try to turn it into a violation of the political system in Canada. I mean, it, it screams mis- and disinformation, and yet she didn't have any problem with it at all. I mean, she literally didn't look like she was embarrassed in any way, shape, or form. That's just my opinion. You can let me know what your opinion is down in the comments. I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you for listening. I'll talk to you next time.